Okay, so we have departed Puerto Rico. Puerto Real, really nice place. The marina was really welcoming. Even though we didn't stay at the marina, they, they were great. They let us use the facilities. Um, they even drive you to the grocery store if you need to. Pretty fantastic. It's too bad we're kind of, the weather window makes us need to go right now, but otherwise we would have stayed a little bit longer, explored a little bit more. But now we're off to the Dominican Republic, uh, heading to Samana, which we've been to before on a cruise, our wedding cruise, a while back. But this passage is gonna be light, not a lot of wind, so probably motoring half the way, maybe some spinnaker sailing, we'll see. And we'll see if we can catch up to our friends on uh, Swallow. Let's we'll look for them on AIS. Welcome, we are Kevin and Janine, a Canadian couple who have escaped the rat race and are continuing our dream of slow travel around the world. Subscribe and follow along this season as we sail a boat from England to New York, see cool things, meet cool people, and experiment with a lifestyle a little outside of the ordinary. You ready? One, two, three. So we heard a matey on the radio, but it was really broken and uh, we knew it was nearby. Anyway, we came up to this boat full of, looks like they're spear fishermen, and their engine has gone kaput. They've been waiting for like an hour and a half out here. Middle of nowhere, really. We're not, um, not really that close to land. That's the closest land right there, little island. That's a bit hectic. Dropped all the sails in a rush, and now we're hanging out until the Coast Guard will be here probably 10 minutes or so. Never know what you'll see on the ocean. They're here, so we're gonna carry on. Thanks very much. Sounds like. So was that a little bit chaotic? No, just <laughs> dropping the dropping a spinnaker. It's having a lot of friction interior. Sure. We just started cruising real nice too. We're going like eight knots. Clip them right along. Oh, that's good. That's what recording's all about. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, we were able to help them. Just, just radio communication is what they needed. Now they're going to get a tow. And they gifted us. It's wrapped in a garbage bag right now, but we got a tuna. Uh, stripes. Was that a mackerel tuna or a skipjack? skipjack? We're gonna start healing now. <laughs> well, the winds come right up. It's it's, it's heading. Us. Oh my gosh! I'll just trim. Sunset out here. So just as it hit sunset here, our autopilot stopped working. So we might be hand steering all night. steering all night. I think this is the drive unit and I don't know how it works. 
but it wasn't working. I'm just gonna have a look. Use the phone to get around the corner here. See angles that I can't see. me too much but made it through the night hand seared all night took turns every hour and a half or so and we're coming into the bay here towards Samana Coming into Samana Bay, and we've got some whales reaching beside that other sailboat up there. Smacking his tail, at least. There's one. Smack. Smack. two whales breaching and then I think a third one maybe and then a lot of tail slapping. This boat here is coming back towards where the action was. But they seem to have all taken off so Ooh. hard to search for them and Oh, look at that. Whoa! Samana is considered one of the best places in the world for humpback whale watching. Between December and March, about 2,000 humpback whales come to reproduce in the warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The whales come from Iceland, Greenland, Canada, and North America to give birth and seek mates in the warm waters of Samana Bay. Not only do these whales put on an impressive show of breaching, tail and fin slapping, but they also sing to potential mates, a song that can be heard 30 kilometers away. Since 1986, this area has become a sanctuary for the whales and is a protected area. Big arm slap. Yeah. We're going to go and anchor here next to Swallow and wait for all the check in stuff to happen.
I promise you, if you step on one of them, you just... Oh my goodness. Yeah. It seems friendly enough. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe another nibble. Almost there. I said to Monica, somebody knows that. Uh, nope. Okay. All right. Oh, it's recording me. Yeah. Uh, I am in an awkward place. <laughs> trying to figure out the autopilot, which stopped working. And uh, so, isolated. Basically, it's not the computer, it's the drive unit. Oh, can I make this wider view? Okay. So, I pulled off this. Um, black cowling from the drive unit. Basically the drive unit, um, there's a, a rod in here that um, pushes this steering quadrant, which rotates it and allows it to steer. It's got some power coming into it. So it's got these cables going into it. Nine times out of 10, the problems we found on this boat are corrosion of wires. So see these wires coming out here I unbundled them coming over to here and as you can see this one has corroded separated it actually looks charred or something anyway I think I can clean that and reconnect it and then we can uh, try again <laughs> It's hard to get out of here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so I stripped the old connection, um, and I'm going to take the multimeter to see if we get voltage once you turn on the uh, autopilot yep. to auto. Because what should happen uh, when the autopilot's off or on standby is you get zero volts through the wires to the, the clutch. And then when you turn on auto, the clutch should engage by getting power through these wires at 12 plus volts. And that should lock the helm. Oh, oh shit. You okay? Yeah, it's just hard on that. Okay, say when. Okay, uh, turning on the auto. 12.85 volts. Stop. Okay. Okay. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That is good. Good. It means we're getting power all the way to here. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna do some work to fix the connection. You can hear. I don't know if you heard that buzzing sound. Yeah, I did. So that was the drive arm going like, oh, I'm, I'm moving, I gotta move this, this arm. But because the clutch isn't engaged, it's not actually spinning the, the arm. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's trying to spin it, but the, 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 the clutch is disengaged, so it doesn't actually do anything. Test time. Now that we've reconnected the lines, Let's see if the um, clutch engages when we turn to auto. So if you go on over there. Yep. And I'll feel the wheel. So I'm going to... Are you ready? Yeah. Auto engage. Oh. oh shit. Yeah, it's definitely grabbing. Yeah. Autopilot is hereby 
Revived. Fixed. Woohoo. Alright. Good job. That's a passion fruit margarita. Chinola. And that one is limon. Tech a cat has sprung a leak. <laughs> So this is a new tacky cat, relatively new. Velcro that holds down the, the oars, like it's really bad. The oar lock, there he is, it's delaminating. Wait, this D-ring pulled out. So we're going to patch her today. We've already sprayed soapy water and determined, see this uh, little marker spots here, is where she's leaking. So we've taped off the area, the sides of our patch is cut. And we're gonna clean it with acetone first, and then layer on a bunch of glue. Where it's leaking most. Okay. Now, as soon as it touches. It. So we patched the corner that was leaking, but uh, if you can see the little pile of bubbles here still leaking from this side of the patch and I was getting some leaking here from this side of the patch also not only that though I had some here and if you can see the bubbles dancing looks like the whole thing is coming apart all along the seam I think it's gonna call for a replacement Printed a car because we're going diving today. I forgot these cars are kind of special. They run off propane.
Mira. How do you say squid in here? All right, TJ, we got your shoes, size 10 and a half. <laughs> towel. You don't have a bottom yet, so you'll have to just get by with a towel. Yeah, no bottoms. Long sleeve top. PFD with whistle. And some and sweet sunglasses. That's all for you if you visit. <laughs>